Hello guys, this is Thinking Through Code, back at it again with another video for you all. I'm going to talk about something extremely important in developing a GUI application, and that is labels. Now, what is a label? A label is a widget that will display text or images, and that makes it that a label is only meant to be viewed, not for interaction. So you're always going to be looking at it. You're not going to be changing it or, or pressing on it or doing whatever. You're only going to be looking at it and it's going to be displaying either an image or text. Now, this is very basic, but it provides a lot of usefulness in your GUI application. The number one being identification. Identification meaning that you have an, a product that you've been working so hard on. You want it to be identified with your company. So it could be either your company logo or your company name. The next use for labels will be dividing the sections of your GUI application. From what you can see on the right here, there's a section for controls, which is where you have your buttons, and another section for simulation. That's by using two labels as a title. And then the third way you can use a label is with feedback, results, or output. So by making your label change its value dynamically, you can make it show uh, a different integer, a different number, or a different result, depending on what you're doing in your GUI application. And last but not least, obviously, we're talking about images, aesthetics, logos. From what you can see, YouTube uses the play button, YouTube being part of Google, having its own logo, and obviously, your very best thinking through code. Without further ado, let's get to our code. All right, so here's the starting code for today's video. We simply have a mainframe that is placed inside of our window over here. Uh, it's color, it's green, it's sticky on all four sides and column configure and row configure set a weight of one for both the row and column of index zero into our window. So when we run this application and we expand it, we see that our frames can expand with it. And if you didn't really understand what I just explained, you should go check out my videos about grid and frames. So let's create our first label. We're going to make the most basic label that you can create out there, not styling it, just simply creating a label. So greeting label, that's how I'm going to call it. To do so, we use the TTK module and we call the label class that is inside of the module. The most basic label you can create only has a parent widget and a text value. So our my parent widget here, since I want to place it inside of my mainframe, will be mainframe. And the text value that I want on it is going to be, what is your name? And of course, my label will not appear unless I put the widget inside of the GUI app. To do so, I'm going to use the grid method. So grid, I'm going to put it on the row zero and column zero. If I run this application, all right, we see that it works. It's in there but it doesn't look good at all, right? To begin with, this is where styling actually starts. It starts with grid. It starts where how you place your label. Before going into the font, the color, or anything whatsoever, this is where you're going to start making it look nice. So the first thing that we notice is that my label here looks like it's completely separated from my mainframe. It doesn't look like it's inside of it. It looks like it's its own separate entity. So I'm going to fix that by adding padding to it. So we're going to use that with grid. We're going to put padding in the X direction of 15 pixels and padding in the Y direction of 15 pixels. And when we run this application, it looks a lot better. Now it looks like it's inside of my frame. Another thing that I noticed that it's a little bit odd here is that when this expands, I kind of want this whole bar to expand with it. This is going to be kind of like a title, I guess. If Let's just consider it a title for this for this video, for this explanation. So I want my label to expand with it. So to do so... I'm going to make it sticky on both east and west, meaning that on the left and on the right side. So that's that's where it's going to be sticky. So that's that. And to do so also, I'm going to make the first column of my main frame to expand with a weight of one. So column configure, the index of the column, and I'm going to give it a weight of one. So it's going to expand with it as well. So since the since my greeting label is on that column, and that column is expanding, so my greeting label will also expand. So when we run this application and then we open up, there you have it. It's right in there. Now, okay, so we're going to see some, something else here. We, we actually noticed that by default, my label is anchored on the left. And this is something a little bit confusing out there because I, I actually saw a lot of documentation that it says that by default, it's anchored on the center on Stack Overflow. 
and on the TK docs, but maybe this has been updated in a view, new version of TK. I recently updated it. So if you actually know the, the answer, leave it in the comments. But from what I'm seeing, every time that I'm creating a label, it's by default, it's anchored onto the left. So we're going to keep it that way, but this is going to be more behavioral. I'm going to show this on another video, but on the next video, actually. But uh, by default, consider it left because that's what I'm seeing. But leave in the comments down below if I'm wrong, guys. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to talk about how we can style the label widget. And there's two ways that you can style a label widget. You can use a configuration of your style object that you previously created. Here from the TTK module, I call the style class. And I can configure that same object for many different uh, type of classes for widgets like this one is for frame. I will create one for T label and giving it a name for it. Or you can actually use class specific options that are, are, are actually built into the TTK module once again. Now, this you can actually find it on the documentation. There's many places like W3 schools or geeks for geeks that will show you how you can, you can have many options here. And I'm going to display them on my next video because I consider those to be more label specific. But, uh, today we're simply just going to see the general broad. And why do I show you guys both of them is because I think it's really smart to combine both. Here's the thing. You can write many configurations on the label class. That's easy, right? You just simply just call it and that's that. But what if you have, you want to configure the color of your text, the color of your background, the type of font, the padding inside of your label and the justification of it all. And I'm going to explain what that is, by the way, but that's already five things that you need to write. And that's a lot of lines of code that you repeatedly do every time you create a label. And let's be realistic on your GUI application. There's more than it's far more likely for you to have more than one label, right? And that's why a general configuration is easier. Just like I can have many frames and calling it the style of our argument instead of my class is a lot easier. It's you, you write the code once and then you simply need to call it and associate it to, to your class. So let's actually display that. So I'm going to create a new configuration of for my label. I'm going to call it label dot T label. And the first thing that I want to give it is a background. So for that, I'm going to go on color hunt and I'm going to take the yellow. I like it. Right now to associate that to my label, I simply call the style argument. And when I run this application, our background has changed, which is perfect. That's what we want it. Now I want this to look a little bit bigger. So I'm going to play with the font, the font argument accepts a tuple. And inside of the tuple, you give the font name. I'm going to pick Helvetica. I like that font and the font size. You can actually also pick a third argument, but I'm going to just display it to you. So Helvetica with a size of 14 looks pretty nice on my label. I like it. It's, it's looking a lot more neat right now, which is great. Now the third option, it could either be bold. There you have it or italic like that. Just like Microsoft word guys, if you've, you've used word before this, or even Google docs, you should be okay with this. Perfect. Now the next option is the foreground. And that is also a color foreground, by the way, is simply the color of the text inside of it. I could write something generic like blue. It's going to work. Perfect. There we have it. But you can also go on color hunt and pick another hexadecimal code here. If you want a specific color, I'm going to keep it at blue. And there you have it guys. Say I create another label here. And I want to have it the same font of Helvetica, the same background and the same foreground. Instead of writing these three lines of code repeatedly here and on my next label, I can simply just write one line of code well, one fragment of code that is going to associate this configuration there. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is padding and padding is important because it also influences the aesthetics. So if I run my application right now, my GUI looks okay. You know, it's not looking so bad. I have my, my Helvetica, my background. It's great. But one thing that I find a little bit odd here is that this, the letters are really close to each side inside of my label. And 
it it's awkward because it seems like the the whole label is kind of compressed on my text so that's what i mean by padding we're gonna add some padding in between the walls of your label and the text that is inside of it and this is entirely different from the padding that you gave in the x direction and the y direction when you call it grid grid actually influences your widget with respect to its container what padding to would inside of a of a label would simply be the padding with of the text with respect to to the label itself so without further ado let's just show how we can do that padding also accepts a tuple and it accepts numbers inside of it i'm going to give it a value of 15 6 15 and 6 and what i mean by that is that what you're giving here is basically the the amount of pixels in padding in between your text and your label for the left here then the top over here the right in here and then the bottom here and then when we run this application okay we realize that we're not that close from a text anymore and this looks a lot more neat we have a lot more padding here 15 and this one obviously you don't see the padding because i have a weight of one my label actually extended with the column this is by simply doing the mainframe column configuration of weight of one but if i say for example cancel this out and rerun my application you see that it still applies you have 15 here 15 here 16 and 16 right we're gonna uncomment this because i actually wanted that and that's it guys this is very generic that's how you ge in a very generic way of styling on your labels i can create another label and give it the same t label here and it will have the same configuration and that's how you avoid rewriting the padding foreground font and background so that that that's how you create a generic styling method of course you can override this with other labels because say you want another label having another configuration you can do that but next video i'm going to talk simply about how you can take advantage of class specific styling configurations and behavioral configurations of your label so see you next time so now we're at the ending of our video if you lasted all the way through here congratulations you're a true champ and i truly appreciate you looking at my video of course if you like this video press on the like button don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell if you have any comments or anything you disagree with me you can always comment it out remember i'm not just trying to teach you guys i'm also trying to learn myself so thank you so much guys and i will see you next time have a good one